Scorpio. Hello, Scorpio. Welcome back to my channel. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing great. Let's find out what's going on with Scorpio and what does Scorpio need to know? We got the love oracle. We're starting off with the love oracle. We've got someone proposing a love offer. Legal matters may be a factor. Oh my God. What is this? A one night stand? Someone's going through a divorce right now. They want to hook up. They want to get together. They want to have fun. They just want to have a good time. So they're coming towards you. They're going through. Yeah, everybody's got legal matters today. Everybody's going to court. That's it. Everybody, everybody's going to court. That's it. Straight to the court. Straight to jail. I don't know. Like someone's getting out of jail or something. Or they are getting out of a legal matter there and they want to hook up they want to have fun yeah they want to get together someone's single now and they're happy to be single they want to they want to get together okay so yeah things are changing here with the death card this could be a scorpio this is you ten of cups nine of cups wow this is beautiful this is gorgeous seven of cups ace of swords ace of cups eight of cups so yeah, someone has been like getting out of jail or getting out of a marriage. They're like, wow. Okay, a lot of cups here. There could be this Aries, this Scorpio, this masculine, and they they're making up their mind. Yeah, they're getting very, very clear on the direction that they want to go and they want to go in this new love. They want this new love relationship with you. This is exciting. This is a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. They want intimacy with you now that they feel like they can come towards you. They want to talk to you. They want to talk about you. They're interested in what you're doing, how you feel, what are you up to. Yeah. They have a new idea. They want to They want to tell you how they feel. They want to know how you feel. It could be a Cancer. Pisces. A lot of water sign today. I also saw Capricorn. This part, yeah, this Queen of Cups. Nine of Swords. Okay, what's the problem? What's going on? Somebody does not want problems. There's there's a little bit of chaos here. All right, so they're worried about the fallout from this. We got Gemini. Okay, cool. So this is this is over. This has been really seriously bothering them. They've been dealing with a breakup, a divorce, a chaotic situation in their life. This is over and they want a new beginning and they want to create a new life. They may even want to have a family for some or they do have a family. They want like a blended family type situation. They don't want to be alone. It's um, important to them. Yeah, they, they've really got their mind set, their heart set on having a family or having a certain kind of lifestyle where they're very comfortable. They're very, they find you to be very beautiful, very comfortable, but you're really intelligent as well. Yeah. They're very, um, set on their future. Like they're very future focused. They have a vision. They have a dream. They have this aspiration. They're afraid that you're not gonna accept them for who they are or what they are. Their past They've overcome a lot all by themselves. They've been through a really hard time. Okay, let's get another deck. What is this? I want to know about more about this Nine of Swords, etc. The Lovers. So there's a choice here. You have a choice. They have a choice. There's an important decision. They're coming towards you. Here they come. The Knight of Wands. Ace of Pentacles. Not Ace of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles. Well, I said Ace, but it's actually the Page. They're taking action. They have this idea. They want to give you this offer. What about it, though? Page of Swords, Nine of Wands, Wheel of Fortune. They want to show you that they're for real. They want to prove to you that they can do this, that they've changed, that they are changing their life, that something is over. They are ready for a new beginning. They're ready for change. 
they're like eager to do this. They really want to make this happen. Page of, I keep seeing the page. Queen of Pentacles, the Empress, the Strength. Okay, yeah. They have really straightened out their life. They've gotten their shit together, so to speak. Whatever this judgment, legal matter, like, I don't know, like someone's getting out of jail, someone is getting out of a divorce, someone is newly single, they've broken up, they want to hook up, they want to get together, they want to celebrate with you, but they want more than just that, actually. They want, like, to build a life. What else? They want to be happy. They want to be comfortable. They want to, they want to be abundant and prosperous. You look like you're doing really well. You're very attractive to this person. Yeah. They seem like they want to marry you. This is like a marriage proposal. They're afraid you're going to reject them because of their past Are you going to reject them? Oof, there's a conflict coming in. Uh-oh, what is this? About the future? About the vision for the future? They want to make things right. They want to apologize. They want to talk about the future. This person may sometimes struggle with self-esteem. Like, they really want to prove that they got, they've got what it takes to give you the life that you want or something like that. They want to celebrate with you. They want to get together with you. Ooh. They, they do, okay. They don't want to, um, They don't want to fall back into old patterns of drinking or like they're not trying to just party for its own sake. You know, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we just party for partying sake, right? It's the weekend. We're not really celebrating anything. We're just letting off steam, so to speak, right? Sometimes. It's not a birthday. It's not an anniversary. It's not like... A holiday it's just another Friday night and that's not what they want they want something a lot more meaningful than that they know that they need to control their urges to stay sober or to stay on the right path They have to change certain things and leave certain things behind when it comes to like their appetite, their addictions or something like that. Yeah, because they uh, there's that Ace of Pentacles right there. They're straightening out their life, their finances. They're getting their life back on track and they really want to do this. They really want you to see them in a new light, in a new way. It's like they want to beat the charges or beat the allegations. They want to live it down. And, and here comes this abundance and this prosperity. Like they are fighting so hard. Maybe for child support or for custody or something. Like they fought so hard for something. And I feel like they won or they're winning. They're overcoming this somehow. Yeah. And now they... Feel like they want to establish a new relationship with you, a more loving home environment here. Mm -hmm. Have they done the shadow work? Yeah, they they've really been working on straightening out their life and healing themselves and like a 12 step program or like finding spirituality or finding a way 
through something. It didn't destroy them, but it taught them a lot of hard lessons. This person has a tough history, hard past. It broke their heart. They have hit rock bottom, but they've already found a way forward. And to get through this, they've solved it. They solved the problem. They found the answer. They found the way forward. They found the solution. They're changing for the better. They want to prove it. They want to prove it. I'm not like that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. We can enjoy life together. We can enjoy prosperity together. I beat the charges. I beat the allegations. That part of my life is over. That's what they're saying. I'm not doing that anymore. I love you. Do you love me? They're afraid that you're going to reject them. They're afraid you're not going to let them back in. Maybe that's a good thing. Like, maybe they should feel... Honestly, like, I don't know. Maybe they should be, like... Because it's motivating them to make the changes. So whatever it is that's motivating them, I mean, obviously they need to change their behavior. If they ended up in prison or they were doing things they weren't supposed to do, if they were a danger to themselves and others, if they were chaotic and unfocused and they needed to get their shit together, they needed to straighten out their life, well, okay. Maybe they do need to prove it. Maybe that's okay. But I do see that this is coming to a close, coming to an end, and this relationship is getting deeper and you're coming a lot closer. And you have something to celebrate here. This is a wish fulfillment and a dream come true. Like this is somebody that you really love and you're really glad to see them. And you've been waiting for them. This is what I'm picking up on. And you've somebody has felt very isolated, very alone, very sad, very upset, very anxious, very nervous. And now you're coming back together and you're going to see each other again. This person has been at a distance. Okay. Anything else that Scorpio needs to know? Yep, there's your new beginning. This is very exciting, very powerful, very inspirational, very motivational. Taking action, it's time to go. It's time to take action. Exactly. Someone is taking action. Here they come. Freedom. What's this? The Hermit and the Ten of Swords. They've had a long time to think about this. They have been reflecting on this painful ending. These The pain and sorrow and suffering that, that they have gone through. They have had a lot of time and they've learned a lot from this. They've been working on it. And they are reaching a conclusion to a project that they've been working. They've been, yeah. And here they come taking action in a very good way. Okay, so this is, this is a very happy ending to a devastating situation that really set them back in their life. I feel like this person went to, I really do. I feel like this person's getting out of jail and they learned their lesson. They paid their debt. They did a lot of soul searching. They did a lot of reading, maybe working out. They've gotten their life back on track and now they're coming out and, and they're reconnecting with you and it's actually a very good thing. Like, like this is, this is beautiful. This is like, you know, you want to use your discernment here. Believe it when you see it. Be smart about who this is, whoever this is coming back into your life, coming back around. But this is different. They're going to be playing a different role. They, they have changed. And I think you can give them, if it's well within your soul to let them come back in, you can give them a chance to show and prove it. But they need to prove it. They should be challenged. They need to be challenged to prove it. It's important to them to prove it. So, so don't go easy on this person. Let them prove it. They want to work together with you to make things right. They want to make progress. It may take some time, you know, but they're working on it. They're willing to put in the work and put in the effort. And that's the truth. They really love you. You two are like soulmates. 
They want to make something right. They want to work on it. They want to prove it. I think that you should be a little tough on them, to be honest. Giving them a little bit of tough love, a little resistance, is actually not going to be a bad thing. But you're also compassionate towards them and understanding and very generous. And that's also going to go a long way. So um, a balance of being like very intelligent and using your discernment and being like very objective about this and also being very compassionate, understanding and warm towards them. Like don't let them off easy. But then at the same time, listen to what your heart is saying, right? If they broke your heart and you need them to apologize and you need them to prove it, then that's, that is valid and they should. Mm, I just feel like they want to make it up to you is what I'm saying. And so you should let them, let them make it up to you. If, I mean, obviously use your discernment and do what you think is right, but like, You know what I'm trying to say is like, don't make it too easy. Don't make it too easy for them. Be a little bit mean to them, I would say. Like, you know what I mean? Like, be like, let this be a little bit of a challenge for them. At first, when they get out, like, I'm having a hard time articulating what I'm seeing, but you probably know what I mean where you're kind of trust but verify, trust but verify, like skeptical, but giving them a chance. Give them a chance to prove it to you and I think that they will. What is this five of swords? This is, okay, yeah. There has been a problem and they are solving it in the best way, like let them solve this. They need to prove it to you that they have healed. Let them. Okay. Um, I'm reaching for my liminal spaces, but I really want... Hold on. I want a little tea leaf first. They're going to take action towards you. They're going to talk to you. They're getting out. They've had a long time to think about this. They've thought long and hard about this. If it wasn't literally prison, then it, it, they have felt like they've been in prison. But I, I'm getting the sense that someone's getting out of jail. Honestly. I don't know. But it's, okay. Warning you of a problem, either now or into the future. Uh-oh, what is this warning? Indecisiveness, allowing your life to ramble aimlessly. Great personal sorrow. So if you, okay, November could be important. That's this month. And things will not always be this way. A change is coming. So a change is coming this month. Money path is opening up. There's been some disappointment, but there's a path towards abundance that's opening up for you. So, so you're being warned about being indecisive. Like you're going to need to make an important decision this month about the rest of your life or... Something that has been breaking your heart. Things will not always be this way. A change is coming in November. We've also got the month of March here. November is Scorpio and Sagittarius. March is Pisces and Aries. Okay, between November and March. So this winter, we've got a younger woman involved. Someone could be a younger woman. The hills, obstacles to overcome. Yeah. A period of prosperity and abundance is on the other side of overcoming these obstacles. We've also got the birth or conception of a child or an enterprise. This is a long journey that will leave you wiser at the end. Right? This disappointment is teaching you something about love somehow. But there's this money that's coming towards you. Celebration, fun, enjoyment, temporary situation. Okay. So you can celebrate this period of prosperity and abundance as you are giving birth or conception to a new child or enterprise. But you're being warned about too much indecision and allowing your life to am amble ram ramble aimlessly. 
You're going to need to, oh, there's your prosperity with that Ten of Pentacles, the Ten of Cups too. So you're celebrating with your family. And this is a good thing. But there are important decisions that you're going to need to make. And you can't put it off. Something between November and March. Things are changing. Prosperity is coming into your life. You're overcoming obstacles. Okay, let's get... Okay, now we'll get a liminal space. Liminal space is Oracle for my Scorpio, please. Like you're, you're entering into, things are changing for the better. You're entering into prosperity and abundance. Ooh, rewritten history. Someone's trying to rewrite the past. Ooh, eye for an eye. The shadows flee until the day breaks in the shadow. Oh my goodness. Okay, so our human social concept of justice is not the same as divine justice. Things that are in history that have been legal have not always been ethical or moral. Just because it's legal or illegal doesn't mean it's right. Rewritten history. Someone's trying to rewrite the past. You need to keep the receipts. Keep a record of all of this that has happened. Don't forget the past. Don't just, yeah, I feel like don't just forget the, just because you forgive doesn't mean you need to forget the past or something like that. Who benefits when they burn the books? This is deep. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me see. Let's read from the book. Eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Eye for an eye is a false teaching. Revenge masked as justice is a breeding ground for curses and an assault on the Divine Mother. It is to be burned with the idols or simply put down in favor of peace, which is what the Divine Mother would do. An individual or societal concept of fairness and the universal force of justice are not synonymous they're not the same thing so now is not a good time to be seeking revenge now is a good time for peace and prosperity coming towards you because you could end up undermining your own peace and prosperity if you seek revenge it's like somebody trying to get out of jail and go after their enemies maybe not the best thing to do maybe get out of jail and go after prosperity and peace instead. I don't know. Up to you. Rewritten history. Okay. Keep the receipts for everyone's sake. Mm, what conditions might a highly intelligent person try to rewrite their past? Even you, perhaps, in this instance. Rewriting history. Trying to tell a different story. Trying to make it seem like something that it wasn't. Like, no, that didn't happen. It didn't happen that way. Maybe someone would like to try to forget that chapter of their life. So it says, okay, totalitarian regimes often target culture, specifically literature, because we are a people who understand ourselves through story. All literature is dangerous to an authority that fears the free flow of ideas. A population cannot be controlled without also controlling the information it consumes. More than a fundamental repression of ideas, this erasure of a people's history, culture, and humanity is a step towards erasing the people themselves. So it's like someone's trying to control the narrative here in order to control the situation, controlling the information, trying to control the people involved. Mm, I don't know. This feels like a warning to me. Remember what happened. Remember what happened last time. Remember, like... This is like both encouraging and a warning. Like 
you don't need to seek revenge in this situation, but don't forget what happened either. Like maybe forgive and forget is not necessarily the best idea, but then neither is an eye for an eye. Let's get um, Hecate. Let's talk to the goddess Hecate and see what she has to say about the situation. Because that was not an expected answer. Like someone has been thinking long and hard. Like they've had nothing else to do but think about the pain and the suffering. And now they're coming out. And they may be hot to trot. <laughs> I don't know. I just heard hot to trot. What is that? But like they get out with such force. They're taking a forceful action. They may even be angry because they've been thinking a lot about this. So there may be a need, a need to guard against revenge and focus on putting that energy towards the love of your family and reaching a new level in your life and in this relationship. You want to lay down your sword. Maybe because you're being warned that trying to go out for revenge is actually going to end up sabotaging your prosperity. It's actually not good for you. Okay, so we've got desires. The bearer of love, number 22. Ooh, this is very erotic. Okay, so... Let's see, what does the book have to say to my Scorpio? Desire, the desire for revenge, the desire for love. The ancients were as likely to petition Hecate for matters of love as any other in her remit. And this is illustrated by the Greek mag magical papyri, a collection of spells, formulas, hymns, and rituals dating from the 100s BCE to the 400s CE. Cap capable of affecting change and instilling attraction, Hecate can bring us or sorry, Hecate can bring us what we desire. All who are touched by the sparks of desire are pulled along in the flaming train of erotokeia. That's what it's called. Eroticism. So that brings us to that hookup, that desire. There's an erotic desire here. There's this... So you're being told that you can get what you want here. So... Mm, I don't know. Do you want love or do you want revenge? I feel like somebody wants revenge. Someone's being pulled along by the desire. Desire for love and desire for revenge at the same time. There's a spark that's been lit. Someone's been thinking about this for a long time. So what are you going to put that energy towards? Towards love or towards hate? Like, I feel like there's a powerful love and a powerful hate at the same time. Somebody really, uh, um, really needs to prove that they have what it takes to be grounded, dedicated, and, and like, focused on making money and prosperity and abundance and manifesting abundance in their life and not using all of this powerful desire energy, this life force energy to do something stupid. Like, I feel like there's a warning coming through for this person not to get sidetracked in, in, in some kind of quest for revenge. Like maybe your success is the best revenge because that's their karma. They're going to have to watch you be successful without them. That sort of thing. Like take it that way. Success is the best revenge. Let's okay. And then we've got entropy. I was going to say, let's get a systems Oracle, but it popped right out. Entropy. Mm, okay. This is like things dissolving into chaos. Uh oh, number 13, which is like the death card, 13. Disorder, impermanence, release, clearing, and capacity. The entropy card represents the natural tendencies of systems towards disorder and decay. 
It reminds you of the impermanence of all things and the importance of embracing change. Entropy invites you to let go of attachment to outcomes and find beauty in existence's fleeting nature. This card may indicate a period of chaos or disintegration, but you're encouraged to accept that decomposition is a necessary part of the cycle of life. Seize the opportunity to clear out the old and make space for new growth and possibilities. Okay, so let the past be the past. Let it end. Release it. Release control. Clear it out and make space for this new abundance and wish fulfillment in your life. This is where your intuition is guiding you. This is where your soul and your heart really wants to go. You need to avoid the chaos. You need to protect yourself against the chaos and overcome it and take the high road. Don't let it drag you down. It's not going to be easy to reintegrate into society, I guess. Like, it just looks like, you know, you may be embraced and you may have opportunities waiting for you. But if you're not at peace within yourself, if you've not made peace with the past, you're going to carry that forward into the future as well. So you need to be on guard about this and stay focused. Don't ramble aimlessly, you know. This can cause problems for you. Because you may come out into a phase, a period of abundance and prosperity, but it might not last. And if you don't capitalize on it in, and you don't use it wisely, I don't know, there's a warning here for you to use it wisely is all I'm saying. It's like, take action on this opportunity and use it wisely to create a much more long-term, long-lasting abundance for yourself and your family or whoever it is that you care about because this might end up disintegrating into some kind of disorder and chaos if you're not careful because you, be, you might be up at one minute but you could always go back down again so keep that in mind. This is like... Um, it, you know what it's giving? It's like winning the lottery, like rags to riches and then back to rags again because you blow it. It's possible. It's possible. You know, I want to give you a very hopeful reading here. So there's a lot of good things coming to you to be hopeful and optimistic about and to embrace this love and this new beginning. And there's a deepening of this relationship. This, you're getting closer. You're going to enjoy this so much together. You're going to have such a good time. But there's simultaneously a warning here about where do you put your energy? How do you use this opportunity for your best and highest good of all involved? And how do you guard against that chaos that's just beneath the surface because things on the surface may be peaceful and tranquil. Everything's going really well, but there's the seeds of disruption and corruption and, and chaos are brewing just underneath the surface. There is something that could possibly go wrong <laughs> if you're not careful. So don't seek any kind of revenge right now. I'm, I'm thinking... Let the universe take care of that. All you need to do is focus on the love and the light and do what you're supposed to do. Let me get one positive affirmation from the Lightseer's Tarot guidebook. I like to use this Lightseer's Tarot as like an oracle because each one of the cards has a positive affirmation in the book and I feel like that's what I want to leave you with. Because someone's coming out hot. And here's the Eight of Cups. It's about releasing the past, letting something go, and walking away. Walking away towards the future. The Bright Horizon. All right, Eight of Cups. What is the affirmation? It says, I walk away from negativity, and I choose myself in a rebellious act of self-love. Releasing what no longer serves you. 
leaving your old reality to pursue a new one. Walk away from negativity and choose self-love. Okay, that's what I've got for you today, Scorpio. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was of service to you. If you enjoyed this and you'd like a personal reading, my email's in the description box below. You can email me. I'll let you know how it works. You let me know what you need. But in any case, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye.